Coming up on our newscast, President-elect Yoon sung yeols inaugural ceremony will be held with a focus on unity and integration. Meanwhile, Yoon's delegation to the U.S. returns home and vows to strengthen comprehensive strategic alliance. Ukraine's president made a video address to the South Korean parliament. He officially requested for the government to supply military weapons. South Korea sees a sharp decline in the number of new Omicron cases, with a daily tally falling below 100,000. Starting Monday, the public will no longer be able to take free rapid antigen tests provided at public testing centers. Hello, your week's off to a smooth start. I'm Daniel Che here to bring the latest. Let's begin with our top story. When Yoon Sung-yeol is inaugurated as South Korea's president on May 10th, the ceremony will be open to ordinary citizens. A key agenda announced by the transition committee announced changing all the official systems to use the international way rather than the so-called Korean age to avoid confusion. Yoon Jung-min starts us off. For President-elect Yoon song yeols inauguration on May 10th, there will be a chance for ordinary people to apply to attend. The Presidential Inaugural Ceremony Committee said Monday that a number of politicians and international diplomats will be invited as well. They're also going to see whether they get any messages from other countries wanting to send high-level delegations. The purpose is to let the people know in detail the president-elect's determination to humbly serve the people and communicate with them honestly, as well as his philosophy of building a country where everyone's dreams can come true. The slogan for the 20th presidential inaugural ceremony has been translated as Again Korea, New Country of the People. At the stroke of midnight on May 10th, there will be a bell ring ceremony at Pushingak Pavilion in central Seoul. As for whether the K-pop stars, BTS, will be invited, the transition committee has decided not to and has rejected claims that they were trying to use BTS for political purposes. It remains to be seen whether the ceremony will be attended by former President Park Geun-hye. President-elect Yoon, who is now on a tour of the southern region of the country, where Park now lives, is likely to offer an invitation when he meets her in Daegu on Tuesday. In the meantime, the transition committee announced on Monday a plan for South Korea to adopt the internationally recognized system for counting and reporting an individual's age. In common usage, people tend to report their so-called Korean age, where a baby is counted as having an age of one from the moment of birth, then adding a year on the first day of each new calendar year. But there is often confusion since Korea's legal system already mostly uses the international system, which adds years based on the date of birth. The difference in calculating legal and social age has led to unnecessary social and economic costs in administrative services and when signing or interpreting various contracts. They plan to first establish the unified system under the Civil Code and the General Act on Public Administration, and then gradually revise other laws using the international system. The transition team has emphasized the benefits of unifying the age counting system, saying it will minimize confusion for the public and make contracts and paperwork clearer. Yoon Jung-min, Arirang News. President Lee Yoon kicked off a nationwide tour to thank the people and to seek ways to help various regions. The stops include Gyeongsangbuk, the province, to meet former President Park Geun-hye, who was impeached and imprisoned after a probe led by Yoon. Lee kyung provides a glimpse of what to expect. President Lee Yoon Song Yeol on Monday, revisiting a stop on the campaign trail, the southeastern city of Andong, where he won in a landslide. <laughs> Also on his itinerary are three other cities in the region, Sangju, Kumi and Pohang, to meet people and inspect an industrial complex and a construction site. This is part of the week-long nationwide tour in line with what he pledged during the campaign. 
On this tour, the president-elect is keeping the promise he made to come back and say thanks to people. It also shows his strong determination to boost regional growth. With Yoon kicking off the tour with his conservative base, there is a great deal of attention on his trip Tuesday to Daegu, the hometown of the conservative former president Park Geun-hye. The impeached leader returned to the city last month after being released from prison on a presidential pardon and following a stay in the hospital. Yoon actually led the 26 investigations that eventually led to Park's impeachment. He's scheduled to visit Park's residence, having said repeatedly that he feels very sorry for her impeachment and having expressed a wish to meet with her. And on the day she moved into her residence, Yoon sent her an orchid. The meeting is largely seen as an effort to unite the conservatives ahead of the upcoming local elections in June, possibly in favor of the candidate Park supports for Daegu City Mayor, Yoo hyung ha who is the attorney who defended her in the impeachment. Young eun Arirang News. President Lung Yoon's delegation to the U.S. return after meeting officials there. The head of the team vowed to do their best to strengthen the comprehensive strategic alliance. Kim Dami has the details. Incoming President-elect Yoon sang yeols top envoy to the U.S. at Park Jin said Monday, the Yoon's delegation will faithfully report the results of the eight-day visit to the U.S. He also vowed all efforts to boost Seoul, Washington's comprehensive strategic alliance while putting national interests and the safety of South Korean people at the center from day one of the new administration. Returning from the U.S. at Incheon International Airport on Monday, Park Jin said the two sides have pledged to strengthen deterrence and forge a seamless cooperation in order to prepare for further provocations by North Korea. Bak in particular pointed out that the U.S. reaffirmed its firm defense commitment to South Korea. Considering the currently severe diplomatic and security environment, the two sides also exchanged views on the normalization of these hard Washington joint military drills, as well as holding a 2 plus 2 ministerial meeting on foreign affairs and defense within the year. Buck then noted South Korea and the U.S. have both agreed on the need to hold a summit between Yoon and U.S. President Joe Biden at an early date, though details like the time are yet to be decided. Also discussed during talks were economic security, including the global supply chain, as well as emerging technology and climate change. The chief envoy also said Washington welcomed as far as a plan to secure future-oriented relations with Tokyo based on a correct understanding of history and voiced hope that South Korea, as a pivotal nation globally, will extend its role and contributions for freedom, peace and prosperity at global level, including Northeast Asia, the Indo-Pacific region and Europe. Regarding Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's request for military support to Soros and National Assembly, Bak noted South Korea and the U.S. had discussed the ways to provide support for Ukraine's peace, independence and sovereignty. Kim Dami, Arirang News. North Korea is preparing to hold a mass rally possibly on Friday to mark the 110th anniversary of the birth of the regime's founder, an occasion known as the Day of the Sun. An official at Seoul's Defense Ministry also revealed that preparations are underway for a military parade focusing mainly on troops. Such events in the past sometimes reveal new weapons. Last week, VOA reported satellite pictures showing several thousand people gathered at Kim Il-sung Square in Pyongyang. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff plans to closely monitor any unusual movements as the North prepares for the event. President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed the South Korean National Assembly via a video link. In the 15-minute long message, the Ukrainian leader asked for military assistance. Kim Do-yeon shares with us his remarks. Appearing at South Korea's National Assembly via video link was Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky delivering an emotional speech even making his interpreter too emotional to continue. In this message, apart from the horrific scenes of war that he described and showed through footage, what he and Ukrainians wanted to request from South Korea was clear. South Korea can help Ukraine. Many military items that could help us defend against Russian tanks, missiles or ships are in South Korea. Please help us fight against the Russians. If we get these weapons, not only does it protect Ukrainians, but it also helps the country itself as well as other countries who may be attacked by Russia too. 
He added in appealing his message that in the 1950s, South Koreans endured a war as well, and the international community jumped in to help. This message also came just hours after the defense ministry said Minister s e o l w o o k rejected Ukraine's request last week for air defense weapon systems, saying there are limits to providing lethal weapons to Ukraine given South Korea's security situation and the potential impact on the readiness posture of the nation's military. So this isn't the first time Ukraine called for help this way. Last month, Seoul sent 10 million U.S. dollars in humanitarian assistance and non-lethal items such as bulletproof vests and medical supplies. But it was widely expected for Zelensky to directly call on South Korean lawmakers through the speech for weapons aid. Lawmakers have differing opinions. I wish to focus on humanitarian aid. It's painful times for them. People have been separated from their families and food is scarce. And also, I would like to focus on the rebuilding of their country after the war. This is because we have many Koreans in Russia and we have our companies active in Russia. Now, in recent days, all of free world decided to send a military aid to the Ukrainian government. For instance, European Union uh, has decided to send more military equipments in order to, to, to defend the Ukrainian civilians. So I think the military aid to uh, Ukrainian government must be regarded as a kind of uh, aid to protect the civilians. As for the speech, it was broadcast live and he now has spoken to 23 national legislatures, including those of the U.S., Canada, and Japan, seeking to coordinate international support for Ukraine. Kim d o y e n Arirang News. Ukraine is preparing to fight back as Russian forces build up in the eastern part of the country under the leadership of a new general. Experts say this will be Moscow's new focus as it's pulled back from areas around the capital. c h e m i n j u n g has the latest. Ukraine is bracing itself for a major Russian offensive in the eastern Donbas region. President Volodymyr Zelensky warned the country on Sunday night that Russia will launch a full-scale attack in the east and has ramped up its military forces. This has led to civilians fleeing the region, but President Zelensky assured the public that Ukraine is ready. Russian troops will move to even larger operations in the east of our state. They can use even more missiles against us, even more aerial bombs, but we are preparing for all their actions. We will respond. We will be even more active in providing Ukraine with weapons. President Zelensky also accused Russian authorities of being dishonest for not taking responsibility for starting the war and destroying millions of lives. As tensions escalate in eastern Ukraine, Austrian Chancellor Karl Niehammer is set to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday in Moscow for a face-to-face -face meeting. This makes him the first EU leader to meet with Putin since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Though Austria has remained neutral, the chancellor said that he will tell Putin the truth about the war and use every opportunity to stop the crisis. Meanwhile, other leaders in the West are planning to increase their military aid. Among them is the U.S. We are going to get Ukraine the weapons it needs to beat back the Russians, to stop them from taking more cities and towns where they commit these crimes. Germany is preparing its first evacuation flights for Ukrainian civilians injured during the war. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson also vowed to deliver new military assistance to Ukraine, including dozens of armored vehicles, after his first in-person visit to Kyiv over the weekend. Military support from the West had previously helped Ukrainian troops to save Kyiv from Russian forces. However, this time, officials and military analysts are bracing for potentially larger damage following the appointment of a new Russian general. The U.S. has warned that the newly appointed Alexander Dvornikov, overseeing forces in Ukraine, could cause more brutality. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said on Sunday that he expects Russia's new general to orchestrate crimes and brutality against Ukrainian civilians. Sullivan added that the general is known for his brutality in Syria and led forces there which were accused of carrying out crimes against humanity. c h e m i n j o n g Arirang News.
For the first time in almost two months, South Korea reported fewer than 100,000 new infections. Community health centers stopped providing free rapid antigen tests. The government reviews ways to ease distancing rules and plans to announce details of four dose of vaccines for seniors. Yishu brings the updates. As the Omicron wave of COVID-19 subsides, the number of new infections reported in South Korea has dropped to below 100,000 for the first time since late February. On Monday, new cases came to 90,928. The highest number of cases was in Gyeonggi-do province with over 25,000, followed by Seoul. On Monday, the authorities started to discuss new changes to the social distancing measures. The so-called post-Omicron measures, it seems, could do away with many of the current rules, such as a limit of 10 people at social gatherings and the midnight limit on the business hours of restaurants and cafes. Any changes will likely take effect after the current policies expire on Sunday, April 17th. Also, President-elect Yoon sung yeols transition committee has started work on what it calls a 100-day roadmap for COVID-19. The aim is to drastically change the COVID-19 response system within 100 days of Yoon taking office next month. Also on Monday, community health centers and testing stations have stopped providing free rapid antigen tests. Now they're offering only PCR tests and only for people in groups considered high risk. Everyone else needing a rapid antigen test will have to get it at a clinic or hospital at their own cost. Although the distancing rules will soon be eased, the government will keep restrictions on facilities that house the elderly, like nursing homes. That is because despite the downward trend in new infections, around 200 to 300 deaths are occurring every day. Most of these deaths are occurring among people 60 and older, who also account for around 20 percent of new cases overall. As of Monday, the cumulative COVID-19 death toll is at 19,679 and is expected to top 20,000 on Tuesday. Yi Shihu, Arirang News. With the Omicron wave showing signs of slowing down, Samsung Electronics announced a set of eased health protocols for employees. Effective Monday, in-person meetings, mass gatherings and business trips will be partially allowed, while business trips at home and abroad are no longer discouraged. Company lunches and after-hour dinners are permitted, but only for 10 or less. Company events of fewer than 300 will also be permitted. Samsung will keep the indoor mask mandate in place. Up to 50 percent of its employees will be allowed to work from home. Shanghai is in strict lockdown as China continues to try and completely stop the spread of COVID-19. But the measure seems to have a major impact on global supply chains. Kim Yun-sung explains further. China's zero-COVID policy is sending shockwaves across the global economy. The financial capital of China, Shanghai, has been under lockdown since March 28th. In an effort to nip the city's largest infection wave since 2020 in the bud, local authorities opted for a strict citywide lockdown. Authorities recently announced that some lockdown measures will be lifted from Monday in areas that report no positive cases for two weeks. But it seems more than likely that most areas of Shanghai won't qualify. Shanghai's extended lockdown has been clogging up the world's supply chains. The city is home to the world's biggest port and numerous multinational firms and manufacturers. The electronics industry in particular is watching anxiously as the city is a key supplier of semiconductors and displays. South Korean companies like SK Hynix and LG Display say that the lockdown hasn't had too much of an impact on them yet because they're fully stocked up with materials for now. But they're keeping a watchful eye because if the lockdown continues, their supply chains may be severely affected. Other industries have been dealt a bigger and immediate blow. Chinese electronic vehicle manufacturer NIO has halted production in Jilin, Shanghai and Jiangsu. Tesla's EV output has also been tumbling as a result of the lockdown. Dongshim, a global food company headquartered in South Korea, has shut down its Shanghai factory for two weeks. Orion Confectionery Company, Amoda Pacific, a cosmetics conglomerate, and Cosmax, another cosmetics manufacturer, all had their Shanghai factories grind to a full stop. Meanwhile, the city of Guangzhou has also been ordered to undergo mass testing.
This means the city, home to the world's fifth busiest port and 30,000 foreign investment firms, is also facing a possible lockdown. Kim Yansung, Arirang News. Back to Indonesia, local convenience stores are trying to better reach consumers in their 20s and 30s as these groups account for 60% of the market. Beer has been a major seller in the pandemic, so that's one product where they've tried new things like catchy names, QR codes that link to music, and soda cans with designs with reference to pop culture. Ideon zooms in on this phenomenon. Since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, with bars and restaurants closing early and caps on gatherings, more people in South Korea have been drinking alcohol at home. According to the Ministry of Health and Welfare, people drinking alone increased from 12.6% in 2019 to 29.2% in 2021. To gain more of a market share, South Korean convenience stores now have a wider selection of beverages with craft beers now commonly available. Among them are the so-called music content beers, which are growing in popularity. The line of drinks was launched by a local craft beer brand in a partnership with a domestic hip-hop label. Each can has a QR code on it, and when scanned, customers' smartphones allow them to listen to music. Within just two weeks of release, all 200,000 cans were sold out. I bought this beer because it seems trendy to me. I usually listen to music when drinking beer, and this product allows me to enjoy the music in an easier way. There are also soft drinks that have movie characters on them, such as Batman and Superman. We found that Generation MZs are likely to consume beverages with interesting pictures on them, instead of buying a product from an originally popular brand. Wine sales at convenience stores are also steadily increasing. There are even limited edition collaborations with online games and bottles with artwork by Henri Matisse printed on them as part of a new trend of using wine bottles as interior decoration. As people in their 20s to 30s account for over 60 percent of convenience store customers in South Korea, more stores are seeking new ways to cater to their needs. Lee Dae-hyun, Arirang News. BTS is the most decorated music group in the history of the U.S. Kids' Choice Awards. At the 35th annual event, the K-pop band won favorite music group for the third straight year, beating big names like Maroon 5 and Black Eyed Peas. The group has now won six Kids' Choice Awards since 2018. BTS did not attend the ceremony in person, but accepted their prize through a pre-recorded speech. Organized by Nickelodeon, the event honors the biggest TV, movie and music acts based on votes from its viewers. Spring is back here in the nation. During this time of the year, many go out and soak in the beautiful hue of spring flowers, especially cherry blossoms. Shin Yeon takes us to one of the best locations in Seoul to enjoy them. You know it's spring in Korea when you see these flowers, cherry blossoms. I came to one of the most iconic cherry blossom roads in Korea, the Yoisoro Road. And it's the first time in three years that it has opened during the blossoms for the public to enjoy. Due to the pandemic, local authorities have canceled cherry blossom festivals and prevented visitors from coming. But while the annual festival has been canceled for the third straight year, the two kilometer long road is open for the weary public to forget about the pandemic and enjoy the springtime. It feels different to look at these flowers here. They're much bigger and prettier than those in my own neighborhood. I feel 10 years younger just by coming here. I think my excitement will last for over a year. Yeah, I've never seen so many cherry trees in one place. And it's like an experience you can only have here. It's just amazing. You, you just keep looking and looking around you. And just keep walking and keeps going. To make sure visitors can safely enjoy cherry blossoms here, the local government is sticking to strict quarantine protocols. Staff members will be providing hand sanitizer and asking visitors to wear their masks at all times. Yoisoro will also be a pedestrian-only road until April 17th. No cars, electric scooters, or even bicycles will be allowed from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekdays and from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on weekends. Shin Yeun, Arirang News.
Early summer-like heat will be lingering until tomorrow. Daytime highs in the capital were surpassed as seasonal norms only by a couple of degrees. But for southern parts of the country, a much more intensive heat will take over. Places like Gyeongju will see highs hovering near 31 degrees Celsius. This is about 12 degrees warmer than the seasonal norms. And with temperatures rising, dry conditions are also intensifying across the nation. Much of inland regions are under a dry spell, so please be extra careful with anything that can start a fire. Although central regions will see brief showers tomorrow daytime, the amount of rain won't be enough to overcome the exceptional dryness. For the Saw metropolitan area and Kangwonto province, expect about 5 millimeters of rainfall. Morning lows will be in double figures nationwide. Seoul will start off at 16 degrees Celsius. As for the daily highs, Daejeon will get up to 25 degrees, Gwangju 27 and Daegu will make it to 30 degrees. Early summer-like conditions will be on a subsiding trend from Wednesday with nationwide showers in the forecast. That's all for now and here are the weather conditions around the world. That's all from us. As always, thank you for watching.